In this lecture, we'll discuss how the Linux system performs authentication. There are two files of particular interest to us etc password and etc shadow. The etc password file contains basic information about each user account on the system. Let's see the contents of the file. I'm opening it using less. Each line of the file represents a single account of type normal user or system user and there are seven fields on each line. Let's take these fields one by one. The first field is the user's login name. The second field at the beginning of the Unix era used to contain an encrypted password. Nowadays, it contains the letter X to denote that a password has been assigned but was saved in another file, the shadow file. If this second field is blank, the user does not need to enter a password to log in. The third field is the user ID, a positive integer number assigned to the user followed by the group ID in the fourth field. The fifth field is a comment. Sometimes it is left blank. The next field is the user's home directory. And finally, the last field is the default shell, usually set to bin bash. If instead of bash, you see there no login or false, it means that is a system user that's not allowed to log into the system. That was the format of etc password. I'm exiting the file by pressing on Q. Let's go ahead and take a look at the format of etc shadow. This is the file. It stores the actual passwords of the users in an encrypted format. In fact, there is the hash of the password with additional properties related to users' passwords like password expiration dates. The etc password file is word readable and that means that any user can read it, but the shadow file, this file, is only readable by the root account. Let's take a deeper look at the content of the shadow file. Each line of the file contains nine comma separated fields. The first field is the username and this is how a line in the shadow file is connected to the corresponding line in the password file. The second field represents the password, the entire string between these two colons. This is the password. Then come seven fields related to password expiration dates like last password change, minimum and maximum password age, and so on. I won't dive deeper into this, but if you are interested, you can find a full description of these fields in the man page of the shadow file. Man shadow. You find here a full description of each field. Let's get back to the shadow file. If the password field contains an asterisk or an exclamation point, the user will not be able to log in to the system using the password authentication. Other login methods like key-based authentication or switching to the user are still allowed. This is the case of root in the latest version of Kali Linux. Let's take a deeper look at the password field. This selected field. Usually, the password format is set to dollar $type, in this case dollar $6, dollar $salt, and dollar $hash. The type 6 in this case is the cryptographic hash algorithm used and can have the following values. 1 means MD5, 
2a means blowfish, 2y means x blowfish, 5 means SHA-256, and 6, this case, means SHA-512. Then comes the salt, this part, and then the hash of the password and the salt together, this part. This is the hash calculated using in this case SHA-512, which is an extremely strong algorithm. Let me tell you a few words about the salt, this field in this example. A salt combined with the password is added to the hashing process to enforce the uniqueness of the output hash, or in other words, the same password will give different hashes because of this random salt. This mitigate password attacks like rainbow tables. The salt is randomly generated for each password, but it's not secret like the password is. If through having the hash an attacker can find the clear text password, all the other similar passwords of other users are still secure because their hash is different. To make it crystal clear, let me show you an example. I'm exiting the shadow file by pressing on Q and I'll create two user accounts. They will have the same password. I'm creating the first user named user1 and then set its password to test. User add, user1. The user was created. Let's set its password to test. Password, user1. And I'm typing test two times. Let's create the second user named user2 with the same password, test. User add, user2, PASSWD, user2. And I'm typing test two times. Now, let's check the hashes in the shadow file. I'm printing out the last 10 lines. These are the lines related to the users I've just created. And we notice that even though both users have the same password, the saved hash is different. It is unique. That's because it has computed the hash using both the common password and the salt which is unique for each user. Now, if a hacker manages to find the password of the first user having the hash, the hacker doesn't know that the second user has the same password because there is another hash in the file. One last thing I want to tell you is that these files, password and shadow, should not be edited by hand unless you know what you are doing. Always use a command that is designed for this purpose. That's all. Now that you know where the passwords are stored on a Linux system, I'll go ahead and show you in the next lecture how to try to crack the user's passwords using John the Reaper.